Marty, it's uh, four years now, starting four years on last yes, year. Yes, and they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> I uh, have a whole file of clippings of the original pilot show, and the original pilot that was shot so long ago, everyone said that they enjoyed the show immensely but saw no way that the show could sustain itself for a lengthy period of time. Uh, I am broiling those articles and sending them back to all the people that wrote them, and I hope that they have good digestion, because it will be fun to see them eat them. What, uh, what did you do last season on the show that had the most impact or got the most reaction, Artie? Uh, the most impact, uh, I think, came from the Danny Kay show. And I think that, uh, you know, this was like a dream of mine from a long, long time ago. Danny Kay was a very, very big star in my mind. And a, such a great performer and when the opportunity was afforded to me to work with him the producer George Slaughter came to me and said Artie I know you don't like to rehearse but Danny's somewhat of a perfectionist and I know he's gonna ask for rehearsal time could you please you know what you guys work out together and I looked at him and I said oh certainly George you know it's my opportunity to work with Danny Kay and Danny walked into the rehearsal and turned around to George when George said, now you and Artie can get together. And, do, and Danny looked at him and said, what do I have to rehearse with him for? We know what we're going to do. And I looked at Danny and I smiled and laughed because I'd known him socially, not too intimately, but we had met on occasion. And Danny and I ad-libbed our way through everything we did on that show. Even the dance, Artie? The dance numbers, everything. There was nothing because we just it just was one of those chemical things that happened between two performers. and. Uh, I saw Danny in New York after the show, and he told me the same as I had been hearing from other that no one believed that we had literally done that ad lit. Well, I wouldn't believe, especially the dance number. Nothing had been staged, nothing had been planned. Danny and I went on our own and did our own thing. And it, it was quite a thrill for me because it did pay off. What, what about the reaction to the near marriage with Gladys? Oh, a lot of people were extremely disappointed. I had to return some wedding gifts. Uh, <laughs> like I what? can't tell you exactly what they were because they were not nice things, some of them. Some people have the wrong conception of Tyrone. They don't realize that they're underneath that, that heart of mud, there beats a, uh, a solid citizen, in a sense. He's, he's, he's just a man who is so loaded with emotion and love that he's trying to spread it a little stronger than he should. <laughs> Are you going to introduce us to any new characters this season? Well, um, as of this moment, I have many ideas. Whether they will fall into a place as far as the production goes, that's something else. I don't know. I, if they don't, I assure you that they will crop up in my special, which I will be shooting sometime this fall, uh, early winter, for airing soon thereafter. But um, there's so many crazy ideas in the back of the, my head, and then they... Of course, we have a writing staff that comes up with weird ideas, and if I can accommodate a character to fit into them, it'll work to my advantage later on. When is the special supposed to be programmed, Artie? Do we you know? don't have any idea. Right now, it's one of those very, you know, middle things. They haven't figured out exactly when it's going to fall into place. We still are just in the preliminary production aspect of it. I don't even know what form it's going to take. Don't know what ideas, what the guests are, anything. We just, we know we're working at something, we are committed to do something, and I'm looking forward to doing it. Didn't you make a pilot to, that was to be your own show? Yes, I did, a, I did a pilot prior to this. It was a half an hour, and it was a very zany, wild idea. But uh, NBC and their program scheduling encountered a situation where they had to make certain decisions at the last moment, and one of the decisions was that the only time slot available to this particular show would have been just prior to Laugh-In, and wiser heads uh, interfered and said, no, it would be the wrong thing to do because let's divorce these two totally. So it went by the boards, and now we're going in a slightly different direction, and uh, it will go to an hour with a lot more music involved, which is exciting to me because I've always wanted to do more music. Yeah. Uh, Artie, I just have to ask you about your darling wife, Gisela. Oh, he Gisela. He has the most adorable wife. She's a German girl, blonde and beautiful and funny, funny, funny. Yes, Gisela is quite a unique human being. <laughs> she, uh, she has a way of strangling the English language. Uh, the other night we went to uh, 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 one of these sports events out here, and Gisela is standing up and she's learning the national anthem. And at one, I was listening to her very carefully, and she was singing along in her broken English, and at one point she came to a spot that little 
stopped her for just a second, but it came out all right. Only it came out the Star Strangled Banner. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I was the only one that heard it. But, uh, you know, I nearly dropped. I just was standing there, and I couldn't believe what I heard. And later on, she said, did I do good? And I said, yes, you did beautifully, she said. There's some words I don't understand. Why is the star, why is the banner strangled? <laughs> and we went on. I said, and I just laugh. I just go my own merry way. She's a font of humor. Is she still kidding you about your phony German accent? Yes, Gisela insists that I have the worst German accent that has ever been devised. And uh, strangely enough, the other day, she ran to me. I was uh, in a bookstore, and she was doing her shopping thing. And she ran to me, and she had met a girl in one of the shops that was a German. And she was so excited because it would give her an opportunity to talk German. She had, I had to meet this girl. Well, I went to meet this girl, and the girl said, that German accent of yours is just perfect. And Gisela said, no, it's the worst German accent I've ever heard. And then this girl talked, and as I listened to this girl, I realized that it was exactly her accent that I was using because she had a slight lisp. And Gisela said, German people don't lisp. And here this girl is saying, I'm so thrilled to meet you. It's such an exciting <laughs> thing to meet you. And I'm staring at my wife, who has told me I have the worst German accent in the world. <laughs> Artie, thank you so much for talking with us today no, out here in Hollywood. I'm just sorry you don't have Gisela here with you. I know. She, well, she's, uh, you know, she's sort of, uh, she's made her mind up a long time ago. She was going to be the house, the homemaker, she calls herself, and that I could do the craziness. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Thank you, Artie. You're welcome. Artie, Latin being one of the most popular shows on television, and you being one of television's most popular people, you must uh, get a, yeah, you, imagine. Son of a gun. <laughs> you must get a lot of mail, and probably people send you things. Well, I tell you, you know, it's very strange, because my interests are so tremendously varied. I'm a book collector. Uh, I have done needlepoint as a sort of a way to keep my sanity while I'm sitting in a dressing room. Uh, now my wife and I are in the process of uh, our, we have a collection of cows, of ceramics and silver cows and all kinds of cow paintings. We're sort of crazy on cattle, literally. And um, I get an awful lot of mail from people who know that I'm a collector and some of the most extraordinary offers uh, come to me on opportunities to purchase things. I had a nice gentleman offer me a Ming vase for $15,000. I, I was going to send them to the producer because somebody's making money on the show if that's what they're going to talk about. But um, I have, you know, and they know I'm a book collector and they will offer me books and whatnot. And it's, it, it's quite an interesting to see that uh, people have that form of enthusiasm for someone that they really don't know but feel they do know. And it's exciting to me uh, because it's the only way really and literally that we have an opportunity to contact those people who are watching the show. I've had the opportunity to meet your darling wife. We're crazy about Gisela. Mm -hmm. She's a beautiful German girl who's always putting Artie on about his phony German accent. <laughs> yes, that's her fort. She uh, she manages to put me in my place properly and put it all in proper perspective. We were just, uh, Gisela and I were in Europe on our trail of the cow, as it were, and we travel into the country and go out in the countryside. We love looking at cattle. We go crazy with cattle just milk cows or steers or bulls, whatever it is. And uh, during the course of doing this for about a month, I was working on the continent, uh, there's a terrible propensity to gain weight. Uh, there's an awful lot of food offered to you, and so you keep eating and eating. And I came back to this country, and I weighed about 10 pounds more than I normally do. I thought the clothes were shrinking, and I discovered it wasn't the clothes, it was me. And uh, I went on a very strict diet. And the diet was very stringent, and I've been following it and maintaining it very well, and I dropped 10 pounds. And I turned to Gisela at one point in the middle of the diet, and I said, Honey, this thing is working, and I think that I can keep my weight down if I eat judiciously from now on. And my wife, in her own charming naivety, turned to me and said, Audi, you know I can't cook kosher. <laughs> and I got to tell you that I just... I had to think for a minute and realize what she had said, and I felt if I was hysterical, and now the story is like making the rounds, and, and uh, once again, she has struck the demon. <laughs> Artie, of all the characters you do, which is the one Gisela likes the most? Gisela likes the little character from behind the Iron Curtain, Mr. Rosmenko, because he literally has the most warmth and the most charm. He is the most naive of all the characters, and... Uh, you can like him. He's, he's a totally likable little man. He's so charming, and uh, I think he affords so much opportunity for laughter and fun. 
um, she's not particularly enthusiastic about the little old man. She won't come near me uh, when the little old man appears on the scene because apparently the little old man pinched her once. <laughs> and she never forgave him. And she doesn't like, she doesn't like the little old man at all.